Amen. And I'm glad y'all sing, uh, y'all sung that knock knock knock. So my wife's here, and uh, hopefully that'll help her. Amen. <laughs> Keep knocking me around. Amen. <laughs> All right, that's good. Bless my heart. Amen. I, uh, I I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. And uh, I'm telling you, I enjoyed the good singing, and uh, I had a good time this morning, uh, whether you did or not. Amen. Uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes I even get a blessing out of my own preaching, amen. <laughs> and uh, honey, it's good when you get a blessing out of it yourself. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it's a blessing to see God work, though, amen. And uh, it's uh, it's always good to be in a place where you can worship the Lord. And I've been in some places where the Lord won that. And uh, to be honest about it, I didn't stay too long, amen. I uh, kind of felt like the Lord won there. Well, then I shouldn't be there, amen. And so I packed my duds and headed out, amen, got out of Dodge. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's good to be in a place where you can worship the Lord yeah. and uh, feel the presence of God, amen, amen. and uh, singing that uh, lifts up and exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. It's yeah. all about Him. Amen. It's not about you, it's not about me, but it's all about Christ, amen, amen. and what He did at Calvary and what He's going to do. Yeah. Uh, for us in the future, amen. Uh, the best comes last, amen. Uh, my mom said uh, you can't uh, you can't eat that nanner pudding right now. Folks call it banana pudding. We call it nanner pudding, amen. It's taters, maters, and nanner pudding. And uh, she said you eat your beans and taters, and then you get the nanner pudding, amen. Uh, but I'm telling you, the best is left for the last, amen. And uh, thank God one day it'll be over with and uh, we'll be with the Lord, amen. amen. And I look forward to that marriage supper of the Lamb, amen. It is breakfast, dinner, and supper. It was the supper, uh, the last supper, amen, that uh, the Word of God talked about. And uh, I tell you, I'm looking forward to that day. Uh, to be honest about it, I, of course, you know, after pop pills, you know, for uh, diabetes and uh, high blood pressure and all that, when I get to help, I want to eat a whole hog, amen. And uh, we won't have to worry about it, amen. amen. And uh, about uh, 50 gallons of nanner pudding, amen. <laughs> and I won't have to worry about going to the house and shooting myself at night uh, with a needle, that is, amen. <laughs> but uh, good to be here, and it's good to have uh, Sister Wisely with us from over around uh, Richmond, Virginia. They drove about six hours, her and their two boys, and uh, Chris and Pee Wee, amen. I've known uh, Pee Wee ever since he was born. And then uh, Chris, ever since his knee high to a grasshopper, amen. I first met him down in Georgia. But anyway, uh, their, uh, her husband's in the Navy. And uh, we pastored them uh, as their pastor, or pastor, I guess it was, uh, for several years. And uh, one of the sweetest families that uh, I've uh, ever pastored. And uh, they have a special place in my heart. Uh, her husband was stationed there in Millington. Uh, where it just got flooded out here just a few weeks, a few days ago. Uh, but anyway, he said they're going to ship me to Hawaii. And uh, man, I'm telling you, that really bothered me. I could have thought of a few other families I'd like to see go to Hawaii, amen. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, perhaps the plane, get, well, anyway. Uh, we uh, really, uh, really appreciate these folks and driving a long ways uh, to be with us, amen. Uh, Tim Estep just slipping in here, amen. Uh, you know, Jude did talk about those coming in uh, and, uh, unaware. They wasn't the underwear, but unaware, amen. <laughs> and uh, uh, we was his pastor in Florida many, many, many moons ago and several pounds ago, amen. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. amen. And uh, God, uh, brother, talking about the, the million dollars, and he said it wasn't doing good anyway because the government would get it, and uh, I couldn't help but think, I heard the other day that there's an international doctor's meeting. And uh, one doctor stood up, French doctor, and he said, now look, he said, uh, we've really come a long way. Uh, he said, uh, we can uh, take a man's lungs out and uh, put somebody else's lungs in him. In 30 days, he'll be back at work. The Italian doctor said, well, that's pretty good. But he said, uh, now we can take it out of a man's liver, cut it half in two, and uh, put uh, one half back. In 30 days, he'll be back at work. Canadian doctor stood up and said, well, we can take out a man's heart, put another man's heart in him, and then he'll be back to work in 30 days. The American doctor stood up. And he said, uh, we can put a man in the White House, don't know what he's doing, and in 30 days the whole country's looking for work. Amen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I thought, well, that, that, uh, that pretty well covers it right there. Amen. 
Uh, amen. Well, somebody said I'm a Democrat. Democrat, Republican, they all need prayer. Amen. 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 That's good preaching. I ain't even got started yet. Amen. 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 I, I wish I could be the president, honey. I guarantee you there would be some change. Amen. <laughs> well, we won't get into that, uh, at least not right now, anyway. Amen. Now, if you got your Bible, let's go tonight to Proverbs chapter 23 and then 1 Kings 21. Proverbs chapter 23. Let's stand tonight. We'll read the Word of God and then we'll pray and you can be seated. I trust tonight that uh, we'll be a help and a blessing to you and we trust that uh, the Lord will speak to your heart. If you're not uh, saved, tonight be a good night uh, to get saved. Amen. It'll be a good time to get saved. It'll be a good time to get right with God. It'll be a good time to get everything right and get your heart fixed up, ready to meet the Lord. Proverbs 23 and then 1 Kings 21. Proverbs 23, verse number 23. Uh, Solomon said, buy the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth, and he said, and sell it not. 1 Kings 21, verse number 1. 1 Kings 21, verse 1, And it came to pass, after these things, that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And they had spoken to Naboth, said, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I'll give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I'll give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. And he started crying and whining, you know, like one of them sissy breeches fellers, you know. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, honey child, sweetheart, darling? Amen. That thou, that's a little tolerology I'm adding there, and that thou eatest no bread. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the key kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. Honey child, I will take care of it for you. Yeah, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We appreciate, Lord, the good singing. We thank you tonight for Calvary, the blood that was shed, in, shed there for sinners. And Lord, we thank you tonight that we are I uh, able and have the privilege of being able to preach the Word of God here tonight. And I pray that, Lord, you would help us realize that without you we're nothing. Without you we do nothing, Lord, we know that. And realize that, I pray tonight, God, you would speak to every heart. I pray the Holy Ghost of God would go up and down these aisles and through these pews. And I pray that you do the work in every heart that needs to be done here tonight. I pray you'd save that sinner, encourage those that are down and out. I pray tonight... Those that are cold and away from God, I pray tonight, Lord, you get hold of that heart. I pray you would give liberty, drive back the devil and every opposing force here tonight, and we'll praise you for all this done. We we'll ask it all in Christ's name, Amen and Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you'll notice tonight in Proverbs twenty-three and verse twenty-three, Solomon said to buy the truth, and he said to sell it not. Also. He said, uh, there's wisdom. You need to get instruction and understanding. Now, we know that whenever you're saved by the grace of God, why we have all these things in Christ. Uh, you see, we have wisdom. We have understanding. And, of course, we have salvation. We have all of this uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, of course, we know tonight that you cannot buy Christ and you cannot sell Christ, uh, but yet it's said to buy the truth uh, and then it 
said, sell it not. What is he saying? Well, you can go down to the store and buy a good uh, King James Bible, uh, uh, which is full of the truths of the Word of God. Uh, and he said, buy the truth and sell it not. John 17, 17, Jesus said that thy word is truth. Amen. Uh, and uh, he said, you need to get you a good Bible, a good King James Bible. Uh, and he said, find out the truths of that Bible. Uh, and then he said, to sell uh, it not. And then uh, as he uh, says that, well, I can't help but think of a lot of folk I've saw uh, down through the years of preaching now almost 40 years. There's a lot of people that I have saw that sold out uh, uh, for a lot of different reasons uh, and uh, went back to the world. Now, uh, you notice what uh, he have said to Nabal. They said, I'll give you something better and greater than what you got. He said, well, I'll give you some land. Uh, I'll give you money, whatever you want. Uh, it'll be better than what you've got but I will say tonight the devil has nothing better than what Jesus has amen and the world has nothing to offer tonight any better than what you and I got tonight amen I remember whenever I was saved I remember mom talking to my dad and said I I want a divorce and I want out I'm tired of this drinking and fussing and uh, you've been gone for days at a time and uh, I'm tired I'm telling you I remember those days But I also remember the day Jesus passed by and my daddy got saved, mama got saved, my sister got saved, I got saved like a good dose of red measles, amen. One got the whole crowd did, amen. And I'm telling you, I don't want to go back to those days, amen. There's nothing this world has to offer that I want, amen. I'm satisfied tonight in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our preacher said years ago, he said there's not much you can do with a satisfied man. You're looking tonight uh, at a satisfied customer. Amen. Uh, I'm satisfied tonight uh, uh, with a King James Bible. Amen. I'm satisfied tonight uh, uh, with the blood uh, that was shed at Calvary. I'm satisfied tonight uh, 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 the way it died uh, on an old rugged cross. Uh, I'm satisfied tonight uh, uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pilate said, I've examined him uh, and I find no fault uh, in him. And I don't say tonight, I find no fault in his Bible, amen. I find no fault in his salvation. I find no fault tonight in the way the Lord works in his people. And thank God in the church. You know what Solomon said? He said, buy the truth and sell it not. Ahab said to Naboth, he said, now look, he said, I want that vineyard. That'd be real convenient for me. And old Naboth said, not for sale, amen. Not for sale. And uh, man, I'm t- I like that. I'm glad I've got some things tonight that is not for sale. Now the devil is out to get to things that God's blessed me with. But I won't say the devil tonight, not for sale. Amen. The world and the flesh tonight is out for you and I to sell out. But I won't say tonight, I'm not for sale. Amen. That God's been too good to me for me to sell out and to go back and that stinking world uh, hey, and live like the stinking world is a living, amen. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, uh, not for sale. Uh, I'm satisfied uh, in serving the Lord, amen. 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 So Naboth said, well, it's not for sale. Uh, I read of men in the Bible and folks in the Word of God uh, that sold out Esau. I sold out for a mess of pottage. Uh, Lot sold out. Uh, I to go down in Sodom and be with the Sodomites. Uh, Lot sold out. I think of old Demas how the Bible said that Paul said Demas have forsaken me having loved this present world. He sold out for the world. Paul said Alexander the coppersmith. He did me much evil. He said you watch him now but Alexander the coppersmith he sold out. And I don't say tonight bless your heart all of the Alexander coppersmiths are not dead. Amen. There's still some around. I but hey, oh Alexander the coppersmith sold out. Judas Iscariot, he sold out uh, for 30 pieces uh, of silver. I know of a lot of preachers uh, uh, that I met years ago uh, and they sold out. They've changed their mind. I will say tonight, I ain't changed my mind, amen. I'm not changing my mind uh, about serving the Lord, uh, about salvation by uh, the grace uh, of Almighty God. I've seen some parents, mom 
dogs and theirs. I seen them sell out. I seen them to sell out and go back into the world. I don't say tonight, hey, I'm not for sale. Amen. I saw churches in the past few years where they've sold out. But by the help and the grace of God, I say as old Naboth did, not for sale. Amen. Verse number three, he said, Naboth said, they have the Lord forbidden me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. He said, not for sale. Amen. Look down in verse six. And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and he said unto me, give me, I said unto him, give me thy vineyard for money or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. You know what he said they have? Not for sale. Amen. And I believe it is a time where God's people ought to stand up and tell the devil and the devil's crowd and tell the world and tell, listen, that stinking crowd, I'm not for sale. Amen. I was preaching here, meeting here, oh, I guess a year or so back in the, in the state of Mississippi. I preached one night, oh, not for sale. Man, I'm telling you, that crowd got stirred up. They got so stirred up and on fire. We went back the next night. They had a sign outside the church, not for sale. Amen. I said, preacher, what are you doing? He said, why, I've already had two people to drive by and they stopped and they want to know what do you mean with that sign, not for sale? He said, Jesus is not for sale. Amen. Our convictions, our standards, they're not for sale. Amen. Well, listen, you and I tonight ought to stand up. I'm saying stand up for God and say, I'm not for sale. Amen. I've got some things that God has given me and they are not for sale. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, first of all, I'm talking about the facts of Christianity. I'm talking about the things that we believe tonight. What do you believe tonight, preacher? I will believe some things about the Savior, and that is he was sovereign at his birth. He was God manifest in the flesh. Amen. He was 100% God and 100% man. He was man when he said, I thirst, but he was God. I'm telling you, brother, he was God when he walked on the water. Amen. I'm saying tonight, hey, what we believe about our Savior is not for sale. Amen. He was God manifest in the flesh, sovereign at his birth, sinless in his person. He never sinned. But I'm telling you tonight, he took your sin and my sin in his sinless body. He, you knew no sin, became sin that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in him. He was sinless. He was a darling son of God, but he became a sinner, suffered hell in our place. I'm telling you tonight oh what a savior thank God tonight he took my place I ought to be in hell tonight but Jesus died keep me out of hell I'm saying tonight it's not for sale amen you sell out if you want to, brother. But I'm telling you, I made up my mind a long time ago by the help and the grace of God. It's not for sale what I believe. I concern in our blessed Savior, sovereign at his birth, sinless in his person. Amen. Salvation only in his purpose. You know why he died? He died to save that old drug. He died to save that drug addict. Why somebody said, Preacher, what do you say? He died because he loved the sins of the whole world. Amen. He he paid the price. All the debt I couldn't pay is a growing every day. But Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. And all to him I owe. Amen. Thank God I'm glad tonight that he took my place. He loved me enough to die for me. I'm telling you tonight, it's not for sale. Salvational in his purpose he came. Thank God to save sinners like you and I. Amen. Amen. Well, somebody said, Preacher, what about so and so? He died for him. Amen. He died for that old sinner. I'm glad tonight. Thank God he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. God is still in the soul saving business. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, not for sale. He was successful in his performance. He did all things well, the book says. Amen. And I believe that. <coughs> he did the will of God. 
And that was his desire. That was his prayer. And thank God I'm glad tonight that Christ paid the debt. He satisfied the law. The law said guilty. And Jesus said, I'll take their place. Amen. Oh, what a Savior tonight. Successful in his performance. Christ was God. And he is God. And I will say tonight, there is none other. Amen. Amen. He cries out in the book of Isaiah, I am God and there is none other. I'm glad tonight Christ paid the debt. He died for you and I. Amen. He's the one that created the universe. He's the one that created man. You might act like a monkey, but you didn't come from one. Amen. My folks, honey, they might have hung from a tree. They might have hung by their tail, uh, but it won't. I might have hung by their neck, but it won their tail, amen. Uh, you did not come from a monkey. You didn't listen. You didn't come from a me guy. Uh, all that junk. Uh, God made man out uh, of the dust of the earth, amen. God created man and then breathed in his nostril the breath of life. I'm telling you tonight, there's no other God like our God. You see, Muhammad, Allah, Confucius, all that other crowd, and all the other gods that this world can conjure up, they are not God. Jesus Christ of God manifest in the flesh. Amen. I'm glad to not God, our Savior, is the one, thank God, that can help you and I tonight. Amen. Not for sale. Not for sale. What we believe tonight about the Savior what we believe tonight about salvation, it is foreordained in God's mind before the foundation of the world that if you get in Christ, you're going to have eternal life. Amen. Are you listening to me tonight? Amen. Well, somebody said, well, I'm a Calvinist. Well, I'm sorry, honey, but that crowd is wrong. Amen. Christ died and paid the sin debt Amen. for every man that tasted Amen. death. For every man, salvation is in whosoever will. Let him come and drink of the water of life freely that is foreordained. God said if you get in Christ, you can have eternal life. Amen. And that's up to you tonight. You have a choice. You have a choice. I made a choice for Jesus. Amen. I said I didn't want to go to hell. Yeah. I was telling the preacher today at dinner with uh, this guy years ago. I, I was a preacher one night. Now uh, that uh, I got afraid I was going to hell and got saved. He got up the, <clears throat> after me that night and he said, That's a poor excuse and poor reason to get saved. I got up the next night and I said, Well, it might be a poor excuse, but all I knew was I was going to hell. My dad was headed there, my mom was headed there, my sister was headed there. Somebody from church came by. Said you don't have to go to hell. Christ died for you at Calvary. Amen. The first time I'd ever heard in my life that somebody loved me and somebody cared for me. I said, I don't want to go to hell. Amen. And that Sunday school teacher said, you don't have to. Amen. I said yes to the Lord that day. Amen, amen, amen. That's good preaching old Sonny boy is doing it. Amen. What are you talking about? Not for sale. What we believe about salvation. I'm glad tonight it is free. We're justified freely. It is forever, amen. I have eternal life tonight. I'm as good as in the heaven, amen. You ever read Ephesians? Our head's already there. You know what the head is? Christ is the head of the church. I'm as good as already there. One lady said years ago, she said, Preacher, I'm just afraid I'm not going to make it. I said, are you saved? Did you receive Christ as your Savior? She said, yeah, but I've been listening to this guy on television. I said, you'd be better off turning that TV off and stop listening to that crazy bunch, amen. When God saved you, God gave you eternal life, amen. If you're saved, you are going to make it, amen. My head's already there. I'm as good as already there. I am heaven bound with a hammer down, amen. Amen. I'm glad tonight. It is forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be saved tonight. Amen. It is forever. It's full and complete in Christ. I was reading a track years ago and it said 10 steps to salvation. Honey, the only step you got to make is realize you're a sinner. You're headed for hell. You come to Jesus. Amen. 
10 steps, 15 steps, you know, 40 things you got to do in order to be saved. Honey, you got to realize you're lost without God. You're headed for hell. And God said, I love you. And he sent his son to pay your price. I the sin that it can. All you've got to do is say, yes, Lord. Amen. Wave the white flag toward Amen. heaven. And say, I surrender. Amen. You're right, Lord. Yeah. And I'm wrong. Amen. And somebody said, well, that's kind of simple. Well, you can call it what you want to, but Paul did talk about the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen. I heard, I've heard preachers preach. Man, they make it real hard uh, to get saved and make it real complicated. Uh, I'm telling you, Christ died. He died for you. He loves you. Uh, thank God He'll save you tonight. I'm saying this not for sale. Uh, what I believe about God's plan of salvation, uh, thank God is full and complete in Christ. Uh, I'm as saved as I I'll ever be, amen. 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 Now, he didn't save his body. Amen. And he didn't save your body. Amen. God said to me a few years back, he said, uh, after service, he said, Brother Son, when I got saved, he said, my flesh was eradicated. I said, well, if I didn't eat my button, I'd pull it off and give it to you. Been the biggest liar in the county, amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, honey, you're not kidding me. Amen. That flesh is not dead. Amen. Huh? That's why uh, the, a lot of these pews here are empty tonight. Uh, yeah. You know what? And I guarantee you these folks, are, uh, they claim to be saved, uh, but it's that old flesh, you see. And a lot of times we blame things on the devil. That's really not the devil's fault. It's just that stinking flesh, amen. amen. God didn't save that flesh. Paul said you're to crucify the flesh. Every day you've got a problem, uh, and that problem is you, amen. amen. Well, somebody said my problem is a preacher. My problem is a preacher's wife. My problem is my wife. My problem is my husband. No, your problem is you. Amen. Hello, hello. Amen. Get your head up now. I'll let you know we're going to pray. I ain't praying right now. I'm preaching right now. Amen. Hey, look up here, Jay Bird. I'm telling you now, your problem is you. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, I don't like that. Well, you better buckle your seatbelt before this thing's over with Amen. him. Amen. Uh, help me preach tonight. Help me preach. Stick out your left hand. You wave at me a little bit. Huh? Wave at me. Wave at me. We might need to call the paramedics. I believe there's some folk not breathing too good here. Stick that arm out there. Amen. Thank God. We got one on our side anyway. Well, I got two. I think Pee Wee's on my side. Amen. Hold that hand out there. All right, now take him two fingers right there. Walk up that arm there. You see who that arm's attached to? That's your problem right there. Now God saved your soul. And he seals you on the day of redemption. Amen. I am sealed. I am heaven bound. But this flesh is not saved. Well thank God one day I'm going to get a new body like the Son of God. Amen. One day I'll lay down this earthly tabernacle. One day I'll put down this flesh and I'll take up a new body. Thank God no more headaches and sorrows and arthritis and rheumatism. Amen. And uh, lumbago and all that other stuff. Amen. I don't know what all it is but I know one thing. When I get up every morning, some folk eat and snap, crackle, and pop. My bones are going snap, crackle, and pop. Amen. <laughs> what we believe about security. Uh, we are sealed on the day of redemption. Uh, sealed by the Spirit of God. Secured by the Savior. We are in His hand in John 10. We are sheltered by the strength uh, of God Himself. Uh, I'm saying tonight what we believe uh, about security is not for sale. Amen. I said a while back in the meeting, he said, I've changed my mind about some things. He said, I've been reading some books and I've learned better about this uh, eternal security thing. I said, you've been reading too many books. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hello? Amen. You need to get in the book. Yeah. You're reading commentaries, you're reading the comments of what men think and Amen. what men are saying. Amen. Amen. Not for sale concerning my Bible, the scriptures tonight, the Word of God. This Bible, the King James Bible, is pure word. Amen. Preserved forever. Amen. They are precious words. They are powerful words. Amen. The only two holy things in this world is God's Bible and the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Leave that book alone. Amen. The folks here tonight, 
you, uh, I'm, I'm pressing next week to hit that big 6-0. Some of you is close to that. Some of you is past that. And I tell you, I remember a time when folk knew in their heart that there was the Word of God and they wanted to question about it. Now, the reason there's a question about it is because of a bunch of uh, educated nuts. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother Sonny. Amen. Yeah, amen. I said, you get education? No, I think you ought to get all you can. You can't all you get. Amen. I think you ought to. But hey, don't let it make a fool out of you. Amen, amen brother Sonny. Amen. amen. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. used to say, he said, uh, uh, education without salvation is damnation. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Education, a lot of these fellas are going to Greek and Hebrew, correcting the Word of God. Why, I better render me this. Uh, that problem is they're just a spiritual jackass. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother Sonny. Amen. Amen. Leave that Bible alone. Amen. You ought to read it. And believe what you read. Amen. Brother Roloff, he's in heaven now. One of my heroes, he said, You don't need to rewrite it, you just need to reread it. Amen. 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 Not for sale. My Bible's not for sale. Amen. Amen. Well, somebody said, well, you might change your mind if you was a doctor like one of them. Well, I don't want to shake you up, honey, but I have a doctor's degree. Amen. But it didn't make a fool out of me. Amen. I have a couple other degrees to go along with it. My old preacher used to say those degrees, like, kind of like a curl on the end of a pig's tail, it just don't add a lot to the Lord, amen. Amen. Huh? Amen, brother Sonny. Amen. Not for sale. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the facts of Christianity and things that we believe tonight. I'm not changing. I'm not selling out what I believe tonight. I believe 40 years. Amen. 50 years. I believed ever since I was saved. Amen. My old preacher believed that this book is the Word of God. And he believed that the day he died. Amen. 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 Not for sale. Not for sale. My old, uh, that old time firm Bible preaching is not for sale. Amen. Amen. God chose the foolishness of preaching. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for good singing. You fellas blessed my heart tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, you blessed my heart. You really did. I had a spinach about that knock, knock, knock your brother around. Amen. Amen. I really like that, honey. You need to learn that. Amen. Amen. Uh, but uh, I'm telling you tonight, God chose the foolishness of preaching. You know what singing does? Singing will get your heart ready for old-fashioned Bible preaching. Amen. And if it don't do that, something's wrong with that singing. Something's wrong uh, with those singers. Amen. Uh, that sing God as a place uh, for old-fashioned singing. I like it the old-fashioned way, brother. I like the old-fashioned singing, shouting. Uh, I preach Preaching and praying. I like it the old fashioned way. One old, one old hussy, I mean, one sister said one night, she said, You're just too old fashioned. Well, maybe. But I'm telling you, I like it the way I got it. Amen. And tell what the McCain is saying, Amen. Uh, I got it God's way. Got it the Bible way. He chose the foolishness of preaching. First Corinthians one twenty one. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God chose uh, Bible preaching, Amen. Uh, and God didn't change His mind. And He's not about to start today or tomorrow. God still uses old fashioned, firm Bible preaching. There's one thing this country needs. It's old-fashioned Bible preaching. Amen. 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 Yeah. You see, they're having to raise your taxes now to build more prisons, yeah. put uh, these criminals in, and uh, if it just put Bibles back in the public school, yeah. right. they took God out, took the Bible out, and now you're having to take God and the Bible to the prisons uh, and to preach to them guys there. I'm telling you tonight, preach them to uh, help this country. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with Bible preaching. I was saved under Bible, Holy Ghost preaching. I got under conviction and realized I needed the Lord under Holy Ghost preaching. Uh, you see, I got Bible standards and convictions through our Holy Ghost preaching. Amen. I, got, I was called to preach under Bible, Holy Ghost preaching. Uh, I found the will of God for my life uh, uh, through old-fashioned Bible preaching. Uh, God has always had a preacher. There's Noah, a preacher of righteousness. Uh, there's Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Malachi, John the Baptist, Paul, our blessed Savior was a preacher. Amen. 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 Abraham Lincoln said, 
I don't like everything Lincoln said. I do like one thing. He said, I like to see a preacher preach like he's a fighting beast. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, this dead, dried up stuff, man, I'm telling you, he'd puke a hand off a gut wagon. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's two kind of preachers that make born preach. That's those that can and those that can't. Amen. Amen. I like it, man. Hey, I like fast preaching. Hey, Amen. I like loud preaching. A lady said years ago, she went to the preacher and she said, I don't like his preaching. We got to investigate and we found out hey, it wasn't my loud preaching. She didn't like it. It's what I was a preaching about. It's the things that I was a mentioning that she didn't like. Hey, Amen. I was preaching here at Washburn a few months back now and up in a, a, a distant state here, Indiana, matter of fact, and the meeting was supposed to to go through Sunday morning, through Friday night, Wednesday night, the preacher pulled me over the side and said, before service, I want to talk with you. I went in his uh, beautiful plush office. Uh, he said, Brother Talbert, we love you. I would love you preaching. Uh, but he said, you scared my people to death. Uh, they've never heard it uh, on this fashion. Uh, he said, why, uh, the kids are scared. Uh, they're having nightmares. Uh, and you're preaching on hell. And it has scared them. Uh, and there's some parents uh, uh, they're concerned about the way you preach. I don't want to pray for you. And that buzzer, I mean that preacher, I put his arm, his arm around my neck and he said, now Lord, I, we pray for Brother Son that you'll help him tonight not to get so excited. Help him Lord to calm down. Honey, you ought to have heard my message that night. It was the last night of the meeting. We left town the next morning. We are saying, thank God and Chrysler, we are gone. Amen. Cows are shouting. She never shouts. Carol shouts. Rachel's a shout. Thank God we're leaving here. I'm telling you, I was glad to get out of there. Amen. Amen. I said, Preacher, can I be honest? And he said, Well, sure. And I said, uh, It used to scare the devil out of me till I got saved. Amen. And it did. Yeah. It did. Amen. That Bible preaching, Holy Ghost preaching, it scared me. Yeah. It really did. And I'm telling you, I love the preacher. I loved him. I thank God for him. But I'm telling you, he had something other I didn't know anything about. It scared me. He had the power of God and the touch of God upon him. He got up and preached. He uh, listened. He preached hell hot, heaven sweet. Amen. He closed out and said, there's Calvary and you don't have to go to hell. I'm telling you, it scared me that I got saved with the grace of God. I said, the arson preacher, you've got a bunch of goats here. They need to get saved with the grace of God. If Bible preaching scares you, uh, you need another dip. I ain't talking about snuff either. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Uh, you went down the first time, you come back up on mud, honey. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I mean, you one of them that uh, <coughs> I baptized a couple, and I kept them down for a little while. Amen. My wife said, well, I thought I was about to see bubbles coming up. I said, honey, I did, amen. I want to be sure it stuck this time, amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, amen. amen. Baptism don't have nothing to you being saved, but he thought it did. And I want to make sure he got a good dose of it until he got straightened out doctorally, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God tonight for the preacher. Thank God for the preacher God put in my life, Amen. My daddy's in heaven tonight because of Holy Ghost preaching. Amen. My mother's in heaven tonight because of Holy Ghost preaching. Yeah. I'm telling you tonight, my sister's in heaven tonight because of Holy Ghost preaching. Amen. I'm preaching tonight because of Holy Ghost preaching. Amen. Every good thing I got in my life came from down to church house. Amen. I got saved down to church. I got baptized down to church. I met my wife down to church. And I met her, she started running after me and running after me. I got tired of running, amen. I said, honey, if you quit running after me, I, I, I can't argue get my breath. I'm mad if you stop running after me. Ain't that right, honey? She don't say amen real loud, amen. She shakes her head like this. Every good thing I ever got, it came from down to the church house. The Holy Ghost, Bible preaching. Well, somebody said, well, and you met some hypocrites along the way? Sure have. But I, tell you, I don't like to go to Walmart, but I guarantee you there's a bunch of hypocrites down at Walmart. 
And I guarantee you, before the week's over, where some of you are going to be there, some possibly two or three times. Huh? I guarantee you there'll be some hypocrites down to Kroger's, but you'll go to Kroger and get some groceries. Hello, hello, get your head up, look up here now, amen. Sure, there's hypocrites there. You got goats and sheep. You got the wheat and the tares. Thank God for the wheat, amen. Thank God for the sheep, amen. What are you saying, preacher? Thank God for the preacher, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know if I told you or not, but uh, last year we was here. I slapped a guy one time over my preaching. I, over, over my preacher. He lied. He lied like a pot liquor hound. He lied. He lied like a Persian rug. And I knew he lied. And I slapped him before I realized it. Somebody said, you shouldn't have done that. Well, he needed it, though. <laughs> I got me a slapping list now. I said that one night, a sister come up and she said, am I on that list? I said, you may be and you may not be. <laughs> but I said, if you're not, you keep pushing me and I'll put you on it tonight. <laughs> huh? I'm saying, there's some folk, they just need slapping. Huh? I don't know much about Catholic, Presbyterian, the whiskey pans and all that crowd. Honey, I know Baptists, amen. There are some Baptists, they need a good slapping, amen. 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 Somebody looking at me like a cave, looking at a new gate. Now you be honest with me now, before God, you in the church out there, before, don't lie on Sunday. You might do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Don't lie on, how many of you know at least one person, one individual, that needs a good slapping, let me see your hand. Some of you ain't got the guts to raise that hand. Honey, I'll raise both of my hands, Amen. Uh, yeah, amen, Brother Clinton, amen. Yeah, amen, Brother Ron. Bless God, that's the, uh, the preacher raised his. That's four of them around here, bless God. You like to get slapped if you're not careful. My preacher found out about it. He said, now, Brother Sonny, uh, you, you can't do that. You can't, you can't go around slapping people. And I said, but preacher, he lied. He lied about you. My, my, my family... We headed for hell at one for you. And he lied, and I knew he lied. He said, Sonny boy. I said, but preacher, he said, Sonny boy. I said, but preacher, he needed it. He said, Sonny boy, you're going to have to go and apologize to him. I said, oh God, preacher. <laughs> well, I did. It took me three or four days to do it, but honey, I did. I went to him and I said, look, brother, I slapped you the other day and and you needed it, but uh, the preacher said, I need to apologize to you. And so I'm sorry, but I want you to know you need it real bad. <laughs> you lied. He said, well, I accept your apology. Man, I hated that when he said that. I was hoping I was going to get to pop him one real good, amen. <laughs> oh, somebody said, right, you're in the flesh. You've never been in the flesh, I don't guess. You ain't kidding me. I, my daddy, you say you're going to have to get up for breakfast before you kid me. Amen. What are you talking about? I'm saying, hey, old time, firm Bible preaching is not for sale. I was saved under old fashioned Bible preaching. And I'm telling you tonight, old fashioned Bible preaching, Holy Ghost preaching, it'll help mom and daddy. It'll help little boys and little girls. It'll help teenagers. Amen. Amen. Years ago, a man asked Dr. Seitler uh, down in Greenville, South Carolina. He said to him, he said, what do you do uh, for your young people? He said, we preach to them. Amen. We Amen. preach to them. Amen. We preach to them. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Not much preaching going on today. Amen. Yeah. Thank God you got a preacher around here that'll preach a hide off of you, man. Thank God for that. That's what you need. You and I tonight in this country, our young folks, hey, mamas and daddies, grandpas, grandma, they need Bible preaching, amen. It'll help you. It'll help your church. It'll help your community. It'll help our country. Amen. I'm telling you, you learn the Word of God. You can find the will of God for your life. You can get involved in the work of God. Thank God tonight for the preacher, amen. Amen. Not for sale. Not for sale. I, uh, somebody said, well, I'm going to therapy. And uh, I'm going to counseling. Honey, it ain't counseling you need. You need the hell preached out of you. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Amen. 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 I got that list. 
Somebody said, I don't like that kind of preaching. One thing for sure, you won't have to get Webster down to find out what I was trying to say tonight. Amen. We need preaching. Amen. This country needs preaching. Amen. You know what would change the White House? It's old-fashioned Bible preaching. Amen. 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 Amen, brother, son. Amen. Amen. Honey, it was good enough for you. It's good enough for you, man. It was good enough for you, preacher. It was good enough for me. I'm saying, hey, old-fashioned Bible preaching. It'll send revival. Amen. It'll send revival. This is, uh, Dr. Seiger said he didn't do any counseling. He said, you come Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. He said, uh, I will counsel you behind the pulpit Amen. from the Word of God. Amen, Amen brother. That's good. Amen. 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 Went like a lead balloon, but uh, good preaching anyway. Amen. Not for sale. My family's not for sale. Amen. My family Amen. Amen. is not for sale. Amen. The devil's out to get your family. Yes, sir. The devil's Amen. out to get your children. Amen. The devil's out to get you home. He's That's out right. to get you married. And Amen. I'm telling you tonight, my family's not for sale. My Amen. blood family, uh, the church family, uh, God's family, I'm telling you tonight, not for sale. I'm not selling out to Hollywood. I'm not selling out to drugs. I'm not selling out to the low-down devil. Amen. I'm saying that hey, my kids and my grandkids, they're not for sale. Amen. 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 The devil will have to go over my prayers yeah. get my kids, Amen. my grandkids. Amen. He'll have to crawl over our old-fashioned Bible preaching, amen, amen, to get to my grandkids, amen, amen. I think of uh, uh, Levi, my oldest son. He's a preacher. I was preaching this morning, preaching tonight. And uh, his son Levi almost died when he was, what, three years old, I believe it was. And I had a very rare disease. But our old Levi, man, he loves his grandpa. He called, called me up every once in a while and said, Papa, I love you. Amen. And uh, old Levi said here a while back, his daddy called and said, Daddy, I need some help. I, I, I've got to preach and I, I need a little help. You, uh, can you help me on some of these points here? And uh, so he preached that night. And uh, I asked Levi, uh, before he preached that afternoon, I said, Levi, who's the best preacher in the whole wide world? And he said, well, my daddy. I said, well, who's the second? And he said, well, you are, Paul Paul. After his daddy had preached, and I called him the next day. I said, Levi, who's the best preacher? And he said, well, I'll tell you, Paul Paul. He said, I've changed my mind. I believe you are in daddy's second. Amen. <laughs> Honey, he must have laid a big egg that night. Amen. And I'm telling you tonight, hey, my kids, my family, and my grandchildren, they're not for sale. Amen. I'm going to keep them on an old-fashioned altar. I'm going to pray for them, keep them under old-fashioned Bible preaching. Amen. My family's not for sale. I want to say tonight, my friends, my friends are not for sale. My friends. What do you say, brother? Y'all going to sing for an hour and a half? They sang an hour and a half. I think they sung about two hours, so we're going to preach two hours. Isn't that right? 